Welcome back. Jesse's out today. Father Charles Murr is fi- filling in for Jess. And I got a grin on my face. If you guys have noticed about any of our radio shows, we always show problem solution. Problem is... Oh, gee, Terry, I, I thought you were going to say you've got a grin on your face because Father Murr seems to be getting younger every time I see you. <laughs> ah, well, no, well go I'm ahead. not go sure ahead. about that. Where, where, you going with the, where, where are you going with this other going idea? To, the solution, and that is orthodoxy. The, uh, the sure. teachings of the church. Why is it 80% of these men in the last four years that have been ordained, and I've met these men, I've met them personally, who say, you know what? We're going to stick to the deposit of faith. We're not going to deviate. We know that, you know, when we were in seminary, we got things that were just not part of what we could consider, consider Catholic. But, you know, we grinned our teeth. Right? We were grinding our teeth, but we just looked at the situation and said, I've got to get ordained. When I get ordained, uh, I'll just, you know, wear the cassock. I'll, I'll be a traditional Catholic priest. And so my question to you, Father Murr, you've met many of these men who have just newly been, you know, five, ten years of being a priest, and they're like, they've become so, I don't want to use a political term, conservative, I'll use a theological term, orthodox, they want the orthodox. liturgy. Yeah. Yeah, they want the liturgy to be celebrated. As a matter of fact, I have to tell you, and I'll just I'll tell this right on the air, our chapel here at Sacred Heart Chapel in Covina, we have young priests who come and want to say private masses. And many of them will say the extraordinary form of the Mass. Over the years, this has been going on for 15 years because they find the or extraordinary form of the Mass, the Trinitine Mass, a beautiful Mass, an expression of reverence, and they want to learn how to celebrate that Mass. And they are just very, very on fire for the faith and the traditions of the Church. And I know that I've seen it even in the L.A. Diocese. They come out and say, we can't understand why these men... They didn't exude that during their seminary, but as soon as they get ordained, they're like a different man. Well, I'm, I'm chuckling while I'm reading these articles in the L.A. Times. Has that been your experience, Father? Many young priests are coming yeah, to you. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's funny, it's funny you, you, you put it that way, Terry, because uh, when I was doing theology, yeah. I was never a seminarian, right, in, in Rome, but when I was doing theology, we had a number of, uh, I studied with, with seminarians from all over the world. Okay. Uh, it's funny because in the olden days, yeah, many of the modernists yes. wore cassocks and were quiet, wore berettas, wow. said the rosary. They went through everything, wow. and as soon as they were ordained, threw everything out. Wow! Right, so, and then the council came along, and then they went, they went uh, absolutely zonker, wow. bonkers. Wow! Wow! Right. But but now. It's the contrary. Yes. You've got all of these young men uh, not wearing the cassock, not wearing this, right. not, 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 not saying the rosary too loudly and all of this. Right. To get through the system. And when they get through, then the cassock comes on the Beretta. And the, the rosary comes out. It's a, yes, and the rosary comes back. It's amazing because that's how they have to survive to get out, to get through wow. the system. Mm. It's just that it has changed so radically. It's changed so radically. And most of those, and let's be, be honest, most of those uh, most of those priests who went through this system before mm. uh, uh, and went with the spirit of the times have left. Yes, that's most true. Most of them are out. And so, but the problem is that so many stay in because they found a comfortable little niche. Of course. Yeah, that, and that's the problem. I mean, I, if, if, if I, I, I remember traveling around for the missions yes. and going to, to certain, uh, certain rectories in different dioceses, especially in the United States and Canada and mm-hmm. Europe, but the, the, there's a hot tub in the rectory. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a, a, a cable television. What? What is this? Exactly. This is crazy. That is fading out. Good. And what's taking its place, uh, thank God, yeah. are good men, are good men with solid principles, uh, yeah. theological and philosophical principles. Thank God. Yeah. But it's going to take it's going to take a long time to to yeah. rebuild. Sure. And people have to be patient. Yes. But the rebuilding, I just want people to know. Yes. And I want them, I want them to hear it from my voice. Good. I know it. I see it. I, yes. deal, I deal with these people. It is happening. Yeah, definitely. It is happening. And it's happening quietly right now because especially Rome yeah. is so against all of this. Right. So again, 
again, you've got good priests who have to go back to the catacombs. <laughs> be it's, quiet it's true. Be, uh, for, the, for the time being. Yeah. But, you know, this is what we go through. The church is going to be around until the end of time, and then it's going to be around afterwards in heaven. <laughs> exactly. Glorious. You know, that's, church that's triumphant, it. yeah. You know, Bishop Strickland told me last week, and it's on our network if you haven't heard the Bishop Strickland show twice a week we have him on, that he said, you know, I just wish if these um, people in the church, bishops that won't speak out or they're heterodox, meaning that they don't have the right teachings of the church, just leave and start your own church, but don't. They won't. I know they, they won't. won't. Of course they're not. They're not going to leave their position because they nobody will listen to them if they did that. But the right. point of it is, is times are getting better for all of us because the next generation, and I, I get this from people too, are going to be much better, but I get this from young seminarians even today who come to our conferences and they come to me and say, you know, Terry, I just want to thank you. I said, oh, well, because it was Bishop Sheen who really set me straight in, in my formation. I'm now making a daily holy hour. And you know what's really crazy about this, Father? Many of my priest friends said, we were in the seminary, we couldn't pray the rosary publicly we, because we were ridiculed as a mama's boy if we had our rosary. And uh, these guys withered it all, okay? And then they get ordained, and then you've been through this where the bishop isn't going to support you with your orthodox teachings, and you have to navigate through all of that. It's not an easy life right. when you're right. orthodox in the Catholic Church today. What advice would you give uh, not just priests who, because you talk to a lot of priests that are frustrated with, let's just say, the ambiguity that's coming out of Rome, but for lay people, because I've we've had the same question at the end of many shows, and you always give the same answer, but it's important. Tell us, Father, how do we stay focused on our faith and in love with Jesus when we have bad examples in the church? Oh, you're always going to have bad examples. You count on them. Yeah. Count on them. Count on them. As, as, as I told, as I've told you and, yeah. and our listeners many sure. times. Sure. Uh, I, I was I was shocked when I first learned when in my late twenties and thirties mm -hmm. about corruption inside the Vatican. That's right. And and Monsignor Marini, who worked in the Secretary of State, yes, <clears throat> said to me, "How can you be so na naive, naive yeah. as to think that where the greatest good is?" There's not going to be evil right across the hall. Great point. Great point. I mean, this is this is it. So, I, as a matter of fact, tell me the evil that exists within the church, the corruption, is actually a witness. That's right to the truth to the church's value. That's right. I mean, seriously, I mean, it, I it doesn't take much to understand that, and it's true. Well, that's what that's what we need. We need. We also need. We also need. Just as you pointed out the, in the last segment. Catechism. Yeah. People have got to know their faith. If they don't know their faith, you're going to be taken away by the yeah. current. You're, the current is just going to sweep you right downstream. You're not going to get there. You've got to learn your faith. You've got to learn your faith. And 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 and, and what is it? What is that? A, is that called prayer? Yeah. Do they still, we still pray? Yeah. We still pray, right? Yeah, I hope so. So if you've got a catechism, you're learning your faith. You're faithful to what is being taught. Mm. You're learning your faith. You understand what can and cannot be changed. Exactly. So all of a sudden, you've got good footing. And you pray for a day that things be brighter. Mm. What more do you need? What more do you need? You need something else? 